His Excellency, Mr. Madhav Kumar Nepal, Prime Minister of Nepal. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Mr. President, this conference on climate change has a special meaning for us. We held a cabinet meeting two weeks ago at Kala Patthar, 5,542 meter high, the base camp of Mount Everest. I show up close from the top of the world, the alarming impacts of climate change in the Himalayan region. The cabinet meeting came out with a 10-point Everest declaration on climate change, which includes expansion of protected areas from the current 20% to 25%, and increased forest cover area up to 40% of the total land of the country. Last week, hundreds of people from around the world, including many great mountaineers, who have marched through the streets of Copenhagen in a summiter's summit to save the Himalayas. We also hosted a high-level regional conference on climate change in Kathmandu in August. All these events reconfirm our strong commitment to address climate change. The message from these events and from the people of Nepal I bring to you today is this. Let us keep our planet Earth green, so that we can keep the majestic Himalayas, the Alps, and the Indies eternally white under the snow. If we fail to act now and act decisively, not only will future generations be deprived of experiencing the beauty of the white mountains, but also the livelihood of over 1.3 billion people residing the great river basins of the Himalayas will be seriously affected. We all have recognized that the Himalayas is the third pole and the water tower of South Asia. It is an acknowledged fact that Nepal has eight out of 10 highest peaks of the world. The temperature in Nepal is increasing at a rate much higher than the global average. This, in the long term, would also adversely impact the hydrological system of the entire region. Formation and outburst of glacier lakes are perhaps the most visible impacts of climate change. There are many such potentially dangerous lakes which could burst out any time, causing massive damage to the lives and livelihoods of the people. We have to acknowledge the fact that the problem of small island states and coastal states are interlinked to the problem of mountainous areas also. Global climate change is thus adversely affecting the fragile mountain ecosystem while endangering its great biodiversity. Therefore, they are the only, they are the among the one, the early and most serious victims of its effect. This is not fair. We like to pursue our common problems together with other mountainous countries. I therefore propose that my government will promote an alliance of the mountainous countries. Let's call it an alliance for mountain adaptation. Let's make sure that mountains will get attention on the agenda of COP meetings. Mr. President, as a landlocked, and least developed countries with subsistence agriculture. Nepal faces many serious challenges in its fight against poverty and underdevelopment. Adaptation to the changing life support system and protecting our environment and natural resources from the negative impact of climate change are our new and additional challenge. Developed countries should commit for long term and substantially scale up financial resources with a special focus on the least developed countries in addition to the regular official development assistance. This would also support for development and transfer of technology 
and capacity building for the vulnerable countries on a priority basis. Mr. President, we consider the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Kyoto Protocol the fundamental instruments to deal effectively with this global challenge. We urge all countries to ensure effective implementation of these agreements based as they are on the principles of a common but differentiated responsibility and respected respective capabilities. We call on the developed countries to abide by their existing commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as already agreed within the framework of the Kyoto Protocol. We urge the summit conference to set ambitious global goals and target for Annex I countries to further reduce greenhouse gas emission. Nepal is prepared to play its part. Already we have developed one of the most successful community forestry programs. Given our huge potential of hydropower, solar and wind energy, we can keep our country as a low carbon nation, having the aspiration to become a carbon neutral country in the long run. We can even contribute to lessen carbon emission in the region through the development of clean energy in Nepal. For that, we need substantial commitment in terms of resources and technology transfer. Mr. President, I want to associate myself with the statements made by Sudan on behalf of G77 and China, and by Lesotho on behalf of LDCs on this issue. As they have emphasized, our development objectives should not be undermined. The aspirations of the people of the least developed countries to uplift themselves from the indignity of poverty, illiteracy, and illnesses deserve extra global solidarity, and we need to redouble our efforts to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. Let's make this conference a milestone of hope and success for our present and future generations to harness the bounty and beauty of our green planet with white snowy mountains and pristine blue seas and skies. I propose the following to make it a success. One, sustainable development and poverty alleviation with gender sensitivity should be our foremost priority in dealing with climate change issues. Two, we must have an ambitious and legally binding deal in Copenhagen following the Convention and Kyoto tracks. Developed countries should have ambitious goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Atmospheric temperatures should be kept below 1.5 degrees. Three, we must look to the future of our planet, but be conscious of our common but differentiated responsibilities. Fourth, LDCs and most vulnerable countries must be uppermost in our mind, as they are least able to withstand the adverse impact of climate change. Fifth, we need predictable, substantially enhanced, and long-term finance with direct and easy access to resources and technology with an institutional framework and governance that caters to the interest and concerns of LDCs. Thank you very much.